Hey folks, Dave from Fringe Ed Tech, and today we're going to be talking about embedding third-party content within the framework of your LMS. And there's a couple compelling reasons why you might want to do that. Uh, for starters, it's because you want to encapsulate, you want to make the process, the educational experience as easy as you can for your students. Um, and second, you, you don't want to lose their attention. In other words, if you had a YouTube video that you directed students to and they leave your LMS, well, they, they might not come back for a while. So you kind of want to control their traffic pattern. Uh, the third is because you want to push content out. In other words, let's say I have a PowerPoint, a traditional PowerPoint, and I have it embedded. I have it in uh, three or four different courses across my LMS. If I am not really using the content collection or the lore, or maybe I'm teaching at two or three different institutions, every time I make a change to that PowerPoint, well, then I'm going to have to push that and manually upload that file uh, in the, where it should go. So. If it's an embedded document, like say something in Google Presentations, then I just make the changes right there in Google Drive, and it's already pushed to wherever it's been embedded across however many LMSs you have or how many courses you want. Uh, and you can also embed that, you can also work on that file um, from your phone, from your tablet, whatever mobile device you have. So you don't actually even have to authenticate in a blackboard to make a change you can just make the change on the fly and it automatically gets pushed out and the last reason is because you really don't want files for your students and here's a perfect example this is an actual powerpoint presentation and i'm on a chromebook now so it will interpret this file even though it typically would download um, and try and open it with microsoft powerpoint or whatever you have so that's that's a little problematic for me uh, because as a student i might not have a mechanism to read a PowerPoint. So what we're going to do is create that document and upload it into Google Presentations. And once it's in Google Presentations, what I'm going to do is publish it to the web. I'm going to start publishing. And then I'm going to copy that embed code. And I can change the size and the seconds that it uh, refreshes. In fact, I'll probably end up getting rid of that because I don't like to have that. I don't like it to auto advance, so I'm going to hit close. So all I did was really capture that embed code. And then when I go to Blackboard, I'm going to go to my course, and I'm actually going to navigate right to where I was just so you can see what the difference is. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to just change my edit mode to on because I want to make a change. And I'm going to build content. And I could put this on a blank page, but I'm going to put it as an item right now and uh, because it will actually display right in line there. And I could call it sweet potato versus yam uh, or whatever you wanted to call it. And here's the catch. You're going to go into the HTML. And uh, I have documentation available for you. And you can look at this later. But I'm just going to say whatever I want. Sweet potato versus yam. So I know this code looks confusing. And it looks a little bit daunting. But don't worry, it's not that bad. I'm actually going to paste in what I just copied. And again, I have documentation for this available, so you don't have to worry about doing this on your own. And I'm going to hit Update. And then I hit Submit. And let's see what that looks like through the student perspective. And you can see right off the bat, students can actually digest this content without having to download any extraneous software. Now, if I wanted to, I could go in and change uh, change the way that it auto advances or change the size. I can just go back into the code, but the book that's made available to you kind of teaches you how to do all that. So hopefully you can see the, the advantages here that you can now make the changes here from any device, and any change you make will automatically reflect in the Blackboard content. So you don't need to go into Blackboard to make these changes. And once you make the change here, wherever you have this embedded, it will automatically be reflected across all those classes. So hopefully it gives you a, a, a nice primer about why you might want to think about embedding uh, content that's stored elsewhere into your LMS. Dave from Fringe Ed Tech, signing out.